None shall stand opposed to our will. None shall... No one threatens my friends. One week. And... That's a week. Hey everybody, Stippling here. After the threats made by the pint-sized doomsayer known only as Crossbones, we here at Place Stippling have been on high alert, intense anticipation of whatever evil may be looming from the cult known only as the Discord. But so far, all has been pretty quiet here. Stipalu and I have recruited the aid of all of our heroic creations in an attempt to secure ourselves from any enemy infiltration. On the ground, we have the Protectors of Old patrolling the various vulnerabilities in our defenses. Scout leader standing by. Scout one standing by. Scout two standing by. Scout three standing by. Scout four standing by. To the skies, we have Warden Erawar and Protector Kiuri watching our backs for potential foes. How's everything looking from up there, guys? All's clear from my vantage, stippling. Sky's clear. We've even built this anti-portation device that we can use to trap Etok and demand answers should he inevitably appear. As you can see, we've covered all our bases, and it's clearly working because there hasn't been a single- Danger! They've arrived! I'm compromised! Erowar? Erowar! What's going on up there? Kiri, can anyone hear me? Something's not right. I feel off. I... No! What's happening? <laughs> Is anyone there? Lindrin? Karakor? Anybody? Hey guys, wait! Am I wearing the blindfold again? I only see you! They're all gone, Etok. The Discord took them. All of our defenses were broken. I failed them. Uh... Oh. Well, I better go. Not so fast. All of this has happened because of you! If I'm gonna rescue my friends, I'm gonna need your help finding the Discord. Uh, okay. But we cannot do this alone. If I've learned anything over the years, it's that even when times are dark and all hope seems lost, you can always count on the six elemental heroes to descend from the skies and... Nope, looks like the Discord took them too. The only hope we have left may be within this bucket. Perhaps I can draw a challenge that can aid me in my rescue mission. Please be something useful for us. Today's challenge is to build a mock whose skeleton joints are oriented backwards. So instead of going from socket to ball, the build will go from ball to socket. Hopefully I can build something strong enough and powerful enough to help us through this mission. It would seem as though fate is deciding everything for us today, so let's go ahead and let it decide what element our reverse jointed build will be. Two, that would be Kopaka, or the ice element. We will have a reverse jointed ice defender protecting us. Let's hope it's something good. No time to lose, I have to rescue my friends. Let's do this.
Whew, what a disaster. <laughs> For the uh, challenge that I perceive was the hardest challenge I've ever done, um, I'm just happy I have a completed figure. So let's quickly look at this and then we gotta go rescue my friends. So this is OT. I can't really give OT a backstory, personality, or, or background in general because he doesn't exist yet. He wasn't born in a Koto, and he currently isn't even active. So I really don't know anything about him. I don't know what kind of personality he's going to have, or whether he's even good or bad. Uh, hopefully he's good enough that he'll be willing to help me in locating my friends, though. In terms of the challenge itself, this was exceptionally hard. CCBS was not meant to be built in reverse. So turning the bones upside down really created a ton of problems for me. I wasn't able to use the standard bionicle head, hands, or feet. So those all had to be built custom. In addition, because the base connection for the bone pieces started with a ball instead of a socket, I couldn't even use the torso piece. So everything from feet, hands, head, and body are all built up custom. Um, in 30 minutes that's exceptionally challenging, so there are a number of problems with this figure. Uh, the number one problem is posability. He has a pretty hard time bending some of his limbs. He also isn't entirely stable in most ways. Um, that's primarily due to his strange feet. But overall, um, I think he looks at least fully fleshed out. There's nothing really gappy about him, except, except maybe the back a little bit. The back could use some work. Um, but he's got some strong claws for, for grasping and for clawing at enemies. He's bulky and muscular on his upper arms, and he's even got these little appendages on his back. I don't know if they're, they're sensor tails or some other kind of device for maybe measuring temperature. Unfortunately, that's all I really have time with for OT. I've got to get him activated and i got to get going searching for my friends. Fortunately, I assumed the worst, so I went ahead and filmed the remainder of this video um, already. I'm gonna go grab OT here, and I thank you all for watching, and let me commence with the rest of the video that I recorded ahead of time. So I recorded this portion of the video earlier just in case that quote-unquote impending doom that Crossbone said arrives. I doubt it, it's just it's just a bunch of nonsense. What, what could possibly happen? Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and see what the winning fan challenge from last week was. This week's fan selected challenge was created by X Productions, who challenged me to build an alive version of one of the Skull Villains from last year. And then he went on to give some examples, like a good Skull Scorpio, a bulky Skull Basher, a noble Skull Slicer, a varied Skull Warrior, or the magnificent Skull Grinder Kulta himself. This is an incredibly cool challenge because it'll allow me the chance to see what did these guys look like when they were alive. I was pretty happy with having exactly 10 challenges in the bucket, and I was just going to keep adding one each time to maintain that 10. However, I had a great suggestion by someone by the name of Robin Hansen, who told me to pick two more challenges out of the bucket and incorporate them into one build. So essentially this would be a combiner of two challenges. The reason why I don't necessarily want to consider this the fan-selected challenge is because I'm not exactly going to do what Robin requested. Um, that's because I don't want to have people miss the chance to see their own challenges built in, in completeness. Um, if two were mixed together, they wouldn't really get that satisfaction of seeing their challenge fulfilled. Uh, so instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is pull out the challenges that I've already completed, pick two of those, and complete those in combination with one another. If you have a great idea for a challenge for the next 30 minute mock video, please post your suggestions in the comments section below. This week had a tremendous amount of fantastic suggestions and it was really hard for me to come up with just one to choose from. Um, so you'll see in the honorable mention sections that there were some fantastic ideas that unfortunately I just didn't pick. Uh, as always, remember that the comment section below is the only place I will look when choosing next week's challenge. I hope that all the precautions I have taken to prevent any sort of catastrophe were excessive and unnecessary, and that you, the viewer, are watching the end of this video knowing that me, Stipalu, and the gang are all safe and sound. But if for whatever reason that's not the case, and things didn't pan out as good as I hoped, well then I really hope that I see you all again. And, and that whatever dangers lay ahead can be conquered, can be conquered by a quick-witted mind and, and by building things differently. It, if I'm in danger, then I guess just wish me the best of luck. Thanks for watching.
Hello, OT. What is your prime objective? I want to be your new best friend. Not again.